Hello, and welcome to this special edition of the Belmont Journal, Belmont's own program for hyperlocal news and community affairs programming. I'm your host, Roger Colton. During this period where Belmont is facing the coronavirus uh, crisis, the Belmont Media Studios are closed. So rather than bringing you a weekly news show, we are uh, talking with various public officials and various folks around town via the internet. Today we have with us, today I have with me rather, uh, Franklin Tucker, who is the editor and publisher of the Belmontonian, Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. Franklin, just because uh, people are social distancing doesn't mean town government has closed down. You attended a recent select board meeting. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, uh, it was actually a, um, a, a really uh, interesting meeting because uh, most because uh, most residents were not allowed to go. <laughs> they were told to uh, sorry, but uh, you're uh, because of the uh, coronavirus. Uh, it was uh, uh, the attendance was limited to uh, uh, people who were who were from town government or had uh, been asked to come and was put on a list, uh, along with the news media, so I should say that. And it was very interesting because uh, uh, we, uh, because let me just give you, let me just give you a, a Jeopardy question, a, a Belmont Jeopardy question. All right, <laughs> okay. um, and the answer is precincts, precinct four, Phil Lawrence. So what's Community that? path. What is, <laughs> who is the uh, person who is the primary person promoting the community path? No, well, that too. But uh, what I'm doing, what what he was, is he was the very first resident to speak to the select board via the internet uh, <laughs> at a public meeting. So he's the very first one to do that. Uh, he connected through um, uh, the Owl connection, which is allow which is allows two way uh, communication. And uh, uh, Paul Roberts, who has been promoting uh, this um, for the last, um, I believe, two to three years, uh, this uh, online communications, was there to help uh, administer it. And I might say it went really well. We heard the voices. People were uh, energetic. And, the, and it, it went pretty seamlessly. I mean, it was, there were some time delays. But actually, it turned out that uh, what, what Paul Roberts has been asking for for the last uh, two years worked brilliantly. <laughs> That's great. And so the budget is being put together and preparations are being made for town meeting. And That's right. And uh, it, was, it, was pretty, uh, uh, it was pretty interesting because one of the first things that the select board did was it approved the uh, town election for April 7th, but it approved it so it could postpone it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about the town elections. So what's going on with the elections? Uh, Ohio got postponed the other night. Uh, uh, there will not be an April seventh election. No, there no, there will not. And in fact, it's still up in the air. Uh, we might even get a a, a a a type of very unusual situation where um, we could have town meeting before town elections. How unusual would that be? You would have people <laughs> who would then be, and, and this is under Massachusetts law. What they can do is they can they can. Um, uh, allow people who are uh, currently sitting in their um, um, positions to continue. And then we would have town meeting because now town meeting has been postponed. We, they, they've they already stated that they're no longer going to have town meeting uh, at the end of April. And the, fir and the first day of town meeting now is going to be when we usually do um, uh, this. It's called the second session or, or, or section B. And that will start on May 27th. Uh, and June 1st, June 3rd, June 8th. We'll, and uh, it will only be budget and finance. It will not be um, uh, all the other uh, items. Um, uh, basically, they said this is going to be mission critical to allow the town to run. So it's going to be, you know, the, to make sure that the budget is set for next year and, uh, you know, and, and balancing the budget by the end of the year. And, so, and I, don't, I don't want to take you uh, far off track, but what does this do to the McLean proposal? This, uh, well, it, well, for all the proposals that we were going to get in the first, the, the Section A, um, such as the uh, items from the, from the Energy Committee, uh, from the committee, such as gas hookups and the 10 cent ban on uh, a, a, cents, a 10 cent bag fee, uh, along with the zoning uh, for the McLean and the, and the ice hockey rink, they're all going to be postponed until a later date. 
we could have a June or August special town meeting to set those because they, you can't push those off to like October or, or November because they have a lot of, um, you know, they, they, there's the people have bid on, on the rink and uh, McLean's have, uh, will set in motion a special uh, permit. You know, they can't be, squ- you know, they, they have to do it over a certain period of time. So it's likely we will have a summer sp- a special town meeting, such as we had when we had, uh, the last one we uh, special town meeting we had over the summer was for the triangle, it was called the uh, Belmont Center Triangle, you know, that. In front of the bank. That's right. It was pretty much, a, you know, a, a, something that was so unusual that, that they wanted to get it done then. So uh, my question, and I think one question folks would have is, is this a done deal? Uh, the oh, yes. the decision, so the election has been postponed, uh, town meeting is postponed, we're not waiting well, for state that, legislation. Yeah, uh, well, there's three, there's three ways we can, we can, we can, we can postpone a, a, a um, an election, and that is either do it legislatively for Belmont alone, do it legislatively do it legislatively uh, uh, as a region, and that's something that uh, has been uh, coming up more and more, or we can go to the courts, and the courts is the easiest way of doing it. You just say, you know, we, we have a virus, you know, we have this crisis, we have to postpone, just as they did in Ohio. Okay, let's close the meeting on, uh, let's close the door, rather, <laughs> on, uh, on town government, and uh, talk about schools uh, uh, for the moment. Uh, kids are at home. The schools have a, 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 an impending initiative. I don't That's know if right. impending is the right word, but. It, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a plan, basically. It's a plan to make, uh, to, it's, it's, it's to support education while kids are out. And, and basically what's going to happen, and uh, this is a two-part uh, thing that is being done by um, by Superintendent Phelan and also um, um, his leadership, um, his leadership council, and other educators, and they're going to find a way of uh, basically in, um, just keeping kids, um, just just keeping uh, all that information that kids learned over the you know the first seven months or you know the fir- up until uh, March uh, when when the, when those schools close, uh, they just want to make sure that pe- that they understand what they what they learn. Uh, also do an enrichment of that education. And also it's a way of connecting, reconnecting with the teachers, you know, especially in a time when, when kids, well, they hopefully, the, the kids aren't, aren't uh, you know, meeting in groups of 20, you know, but they're basically at home, especially the smaller kids. Uh, they want to reconnect with the teachers. So it gives them that kind of like, uh, uh, inter- uh, like the socialization. And that's one of the, that's also one of the reasons why they're doing so if parents haven't heard from the schools, the they message should, that they, they, they should, will be. They should have heard, they should have heard, uh, what, well, well, they should have heard um, by now. And also they will get, uh, they will actually talk to the teachers uh, beginning of uh, on Friday and, and Monday in, in that time range, just to, just to reintroduce them to the, to the students, but also get them to, to, to continue learning. There's a good possibility, you know, no one wants to talk about it, but they're already done in a couple of states. Kansas is one where they said school year's over. You know, we're not even going to try, you know, it's just, you know, if, if we, if, if, if Belmont started and tried to get the 180 days, um, 185 days, whatever that is, <laughs> I keep forgetting what, how many are they are, but if they try to do that, they'd have to go into the middle of July. And it's just, you know, that, that will, would just be a little too much. Now, you know, there's, there's all options are still up in the air. Will the state allow people to, um, you will allow students to have less time, you know. Uh, so they, they, they want to get the, the kids back in the classroom, but uh, there might not be that opportunity to do a complete school year. Uh, one thing that, that this new in, in, initiative and plan from Belmont is, and, and, and this is what the state also wants everybody to know, this is not, um, this is not online education. They're not teaching you anything new. This is not as if they are going to be like homeschooling or anything like that. This is just going to be reintroducing those things that they learned or they should have learned. Let's say for an eighth grader, it would be pre-calculus or something like that. And now there's also, uh, you know, there's also a lot of things that are still going on. You know, SETs have been, have been canceled. This is very important for juniors in high school. Uh, AP courses, how many do, how many do you do get this? Uh, credits that you've uh, studied so long for, especially if you're, you know, a senior. Uh, 
So there's still so many things and so many balls up in the air, but um, they're usually but they're getting done in a in a in a way now, um, an ad hoc way, but it's still being done. Okay, I have one last question that I've uh, heard parents asking about uh, MCAS uh, testing, uh, all of the the regular testing. Do you have information or insight? That's one of those things that are still up in the air. I mean, they you know it's mandated by the state. But, you know, we're in a crisis. You know, how do you, how do you, you know, rectify both ends? You know, do you want to have them spend, you know, three days, two days just taking tests? Or do you want them to be educated in, in, in the classroom? That is something that's going to be, have to be negotiated. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, we will get back to you uh, on a regular basis as we navigate this crisis. So. Maybe, maybe this will be the, the regular way we do it. You know, this is Paul <laughs> Roberts. <laughs> Paul Roberts Green. That's that. This is what we would be doing. That's great. Well, we've been speaking with Franklin Tucker, who is editor and publisher of the Belmontonian. And, Belmont, this, and, and this is my bet. <laughs> Belmont's online source for hyperlocal news. You've been watching a special edition of the Belmont Journal. We will bring be bringing you these special online. Uh, interviews as we hear more from different people who have information that you need to know. I'm your host, Roger Colton. I, I will see you again next time.